Well, good morning, all you hip and cool cats. Good afternoon and perhaps even good evening. It is wonderful to see you all. Thank you so much for dropping by. Mr. Brian, Mr. Chris and IRM with the rocket. I do like that. Thank you so much. And anyone else who's out there watching, wonderful to see you. Miss Julia, for example. Very, very cool. Let me go by let me go start by putting on a bit of, you know, a bit of a cool track here in the background. See if we can actually listen to it. Can we hear it? Maybe it's not actually in this scene. It's cool. It'll it'll come up in a minute, I think, I'm sure. Today, and thank you so much for the innovative title there, Brian. I think Substance Sunday is maybe a series I should consider uh, making. So every Sunday I should play with Substance Painter. I really liked it when Chris had this thing that he called Marvelous is on a Monday, which is now Clo Monday, Clo 3D Monday, or a slightly longer title, Clo 3D Mondays, formerly known as Marvelous is on a Mondays. But it's cool. It's I, I like this alliteration thing in the beginning. And so I thought today uh, it'll be a really exciting idea to texture Chris's wedge sandals that he's made. So they're available from his store on Kofi. And I think I could, there's a link in the description of this video if you want to grab those. They're more or less free. He's charging $1.99 for it. I hope the price is going to go up once we, once we put some exciting textures on this with Substance Painter. So Chris, my plan is to try this out. If it works, I'll, I'll see if I can make one or two or maybe three options and I'll send them to you so that you can go and use them in that product totally fine with me if you wanted to sell those and make a buck or two of it because it's an exercise for me it's an exercise for you if it makes your product better if it makes a combined super exciting product it's going to be super cool super cool so i'm thinking what we should be doing here is oh there we go i can make that larger that's cool i'm thinking i'm going to go and uh, fiddle with this material here then i'm going to try and put some cork on this this is going to be leather like you have and in various colors. I'm going to find something like a metal for this and I'm going to try and put your logo on the sides of this like the Crocs guys do, like an embossed thing. I don't know how to do any of this, but let's just let's just see how we roll and uh, and see what else we can learn and pick up. So that's my plan. That's my plan for today. Uh, there we go make that a bit smaller and um, there's before we get going I wanted to show you something that I've made yesterday do I have it on this computer no of course not dang maybe I'll show you next time <laughs> there are some things that I've been playing around with and of course this is not where they are no then that's not actually here um, it's on um, it's on my other channel it's on my 3d shenanigans channel and there are some groovy there are some extra, extra groovy things. Uh, if you go scroll down to the bottom of my channel's main page, you see my other channel, one of my many other channels, which is 3D Shenanigans. And in it, I've just uploaded a couple of videos which are variations on the DAS animation yesterday. So this one here is the, the one in the subway tunnel. And this one looks just so cool because I've given it another little spin. So this is a uh, an AI effect that I've applied in PaintShop Pro and I thought it's a really nice variation on an animation that we already know but it's you know it's kind of got a little bit of a spin to it and it's all hand drawn and stuff this is thanks to a tip from Brian by the way who's made a video on how to do this in PaintShop Pro so very very nice it's just you know let me just roll that again because I'm quite proud of that actually there's a this auto play off here perfect <laughs> yeah so this is what it looks like uh thank you YouTube there, this is what it looks like. And it's the retro pop edition. There's so many other effects that you can apply and it's a lengthy process, but but if you're used to animation, it's actually not that uh, that alien to you that every frame takes a number of seconds to process. And I think in this case, it's about six to eight seconds. And I really like this look because you can barely tell that it's a 3D animation. It's just, you know, very, very different now. <laughs> Mr. Nate is here as well. Very good to see you. Hey, thank you all moderators to, for all your hard work there yesterday on the DAS stream. Everyone who's been watching, thank you so much for dropping by. I really like that. It was a good stream. I had a good, I had a good time. It was um, two hours longer than I had anticipated, but hey, that's just, that's just no, that's just how it rolls sometimes. So yes, thank you so much for hanging in there, guys, just before Christmas. <laughs> Here's another one that I've made yesterday and these weren't ready in time for the dash stream Otherwise, I would have smuggled them in to the holding loop. So I'll do that for next time This is that diner animation and it just looks so completely different 
These, both these animations were rendered in 60 frames a second originally, and then I've messed with the timing a little bit. And uh, we sometimes something that Brian and I both found out is that you have something that is rendered in 60 frames a second, and you turn it into this effect, you often have more detail flickering at frames than is really necessary and that doesn't create a good viewing experience. So what I've tried here is to use uh, to not actually use the 1080p frame to make this effect to apply this effect. I've actually downsized the images and then applied the effect and then upressed them again and that really got rid of a lot of the um, hard edges there. And you know thanks to another AI powered process it actually then you know looks looks quite looks quite acceptable. So it doesn't you don't you don't see um, edging or anything so that's all kind of interpolated there. Very very cool. <laughs> Right, I thought so too, Chris. I think it's a it's a really nice idea to uh, to have just another option if you've if you've gone through all the trouble and effort to render an animation that took a long time as it is, uh, but then if you apply an effect like that to turn it into something seriously arty, that's just so so cool. And also, I was thinking um, then if you if you go and render something out as an animation that isn't quite high res enough to be stunning or the lighting isn't right or you know all these things that take a lot of time to uh, to do if you're already thinking ahead and this is the effect that you want to use at one point then the render isn't actually that important it's more like a template of what this magic can do there so there we go all of that can be yours by the way for only 30 bucks if you pick up that that exciting painter uh, paint shop pro bundle the corel bundle create with visual impact i believe very exciting <laughs> Right, there we go. Thank you, Brian. That is exactly that is exactly the video I'm referring to. Good stuff. So, um, first of all, let us have a look at Chris's sandals. So, the, the of course, the first step on that is I need to... I've downloaded them just now. These are them. I'm going to go and extract all into my downloads folder for now but i want to be all clever about this because if i were to give chris the text just back i think what i might do is i might give you the combined zipped product back and for that i need to have this in a safe place and i'm going to do this in um in my substance project folder also i might just just so that you can follow the cursor a little bit better i'm going to put my pointer focus thing on so I've organized my projects in Dropbox by, by 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 main subject where I'm where I'm starting, and then in there we have a little project. So in this case, that could be the wedge sandals, and uh, this. So I'm going to make one one new folder here, first of all, and call it wedge sand sandals sandals project well just wedge samples that's cool so in here i'll have multiple files like you know whatever it is obj's and substance files and all that but there's a product that i like to keep safe and that's the one that i've just unzipped which is that one so i'm going to call that wedge sandals product just so that we know these are all the files that the user is going to get at one point there's even a work in progress folder here hmm not entirely sure if that should be in there in the distributed product. Probably not, but that's cool. I will take things out if and when I need it. So this now should this should now load me the sandals, and let's just see if that is indeed possible. Uh, let's use the regular version of Desk View. Indeed. Thank you, Brian. I think, is that the right link? Let's have a look. I think it probably is. Thank you, Brian. That's exactly, is it? Yes, create with visual impact. They keep extending this bundle. So this was over, this was supposed to be over already. And so this bundle that Brian just posted the link to, that comes with Painter 2021, a ton of brushes. It comes with a video editor. And also it comes with Paint Shop Pro with which you can make these effects. So there's, there's a way that you can apply to single picture, but Paint Shop Pro can also work on a series of images when you use, when you run a script. It also comes with something called Aftershot, which is uh, a bit like, what's it called here? Lightroom. So, you know, image, uh, image kind of program that lets you do that lets you do a lot with a series of images and then you apply color correction to 20 images and stuff like that. 
Alrighty, so in my content library then, I'll go and map that base directory that I've just made, which was in Substance. I like Substance Sundays, that's really cool. Which Sandals product, that's what I'm gonna go and map here. It takes Dastry a second to figure this out. And here we go. Wedge Sandals product, and it is of course in people, I'm thinking, Genesis 8 female, clothing, seacocks, wedge sandals, and then I'm gonna put my things into materials here. Uh, if once, you know, if, if we get there, let's just, you know, fingers crossed. So, wedge sandals pose toes, I like it. Then we have the wedge sandals. We have, oh, you made them props. Oh, Chris, that's so nice. So these are not, this is so nice. I think you may have been thinking of me then. Because these are now not, um, what are they called? Rigid follow notes. I suppose they're just props you add. Oh, that's very cool. And then, of course, you have the full thing there. That's very nice. So what happens if I just load the full thing in? Does that work? Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Here they are. And I suppose I can go and pose them. Cutting. There we go. That's groovy. And then we have... And then we have the... Props are already attached. Oh, they are already follow notes. No, they are not. They, they are. They are already follow notes. So what are what are the separate props then? Just so that I understand what this what's what's happening here. Let me go uh, close that and just go put the sandals in. Pamela, top of the morning. How are you? Thank you so much for being there yesterday morning as well as yesterday afternoon. Very good to see you. How's your house doing? Is it clean yet? <laughs> and then if I do that, then those guys come in, but they're still really followers. Got, got yeah. But maybe maybe they're not actually. No, they are. Yes, they are. Okay, okay, okay. Good. I just need to know this because uh, for exporting, I think we may have to export these sandals without the buckle, right? I think. I think. Yes, this is indeed live. Do you know Julia got a notification this morning for the live stream from yesterday? And you think, thanks YouTube, that's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, no worries. <laughs> Thank you, cats, <laughs> for making more work for Pamela. Um, there we go. And then posing, that's just for, for these guys. I think I might just exp export these out. No, actually, let me not do that. Let me go and export the whole thing out and just see how we roll with that, the whole thing, export. I wanna see how, how it looks. Last time I had a problem with the rigid follow notes. I'll call this folder here. This is sometimes what happens. I don't know if it's my computer or not. I've just made a new folder, right? And nothing is here, but it is actually here. But what I have to do is I have to go and refresh and then I see it, and then I can also rename it. I don't know why that happens. It's ever since my new installation. It doesn't happen in every um, dialog, but but in this one it does. So it's crazy. Same when I rename something. It's the uh, same thing. Crazy. I'll just call the sandals, and I will use the regular das thing. And I don't need to export the map. So I'll just go and say none. So materials are still there, but no maps. I think. <laughs> I see. And now let's go what Mr. Substance has to say. M Mr. Substance Painter. All the quotes are still working. Stories of imagination tend to upset those without one. Yes. <laughs> Terry Pratchett at his finest. <sighs> Hours later, Substance Painter loads. <laughs> right, yes, I totally agree, Julia. <laughs> See, Brian and I were talking about something ex super exciting literally this week uh, multiple times on our Discord server. Uh, one had to do with transferring textures from one object to another using Wrap 3D. And the other one had to do with turning low poly people into pausable things inside um, iClone as well as Das Studio. And I thought because it's a bit shocking to see that today is already the 19th of December 
which means next Saturday is Christmas Day, which is like, ooh, how did that happen? I was thinking I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some more streams this week on uh, Twitter and on Twitter on Twitch in the afternoons. Join me for that if you're off, if you're leading up to the Christmas period. You know, let's do some exciting 3D experiments starting hopefully tomorrow. I'm gonna try and do this every day at around 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're around, do drop by. I'm gonna go and create a new project. I'm gonna go and select my thing and we'll see what that looks like uh, this here what am i going to say asmpb are metallic roughness startup things i think i might just go and pick the other thing hello there we go i might pick pbr metallic roughness alpha blend just because I'd like, and I'll pick OpenGL because we're going to do this in that studio eventually. So hopefully if everything works well, I can just go and do this. <laughs> a Christmas cleaning as well. Pamela, there's a lot of cleaning that, that, I, that I hear there. How do I move that again? There we go, that's perfect. Do you know, I might actually also, um, just before, I, I'll go export this again. Looks like there's no distortions. I think I like this. I'm gonna go and, maybe put them a little bit closer together. I don't actually need to do that. No, what am I talking about? I'm going to use symmetry for painting, I think. I think that's what I do, isn't it? So it looks like everything is is where I need it to be, right? Is that correct? Let's just assume everything is cool. And knowing me, we're probably gonna have to do this several times anyway. I think the first thing I do is I bake the maps, right? Is that so? Bake mesh maps. And we wanna do this also in, I guess, 2K. And for some reason, we don't need the normal and the thickness map. And the ID map, texture set buckle, oh, okay. Uh, do we need an ID map? I don't. I don't actually know. Let's let's see what happens. Watch the spectacle. Hey, that's a clever idea. We'll just celebrate Chinese Christmas instead. I like that. <laughs> Nate, I think sometimes it's just one of those things that you have to be really in the mood to. Um, to clean something because um, you know I'm, I'm not in the mood for cleaning either we have so many more exciting things to do so every once in a while I catch myself being in the mood for cleaning once a year maybe <laughs> and you can't overdo it very important and I do like the idea as well that we just put it on the packets and say hey happy Chinese Christmas <laughs> Moms. <laughs> I like this. This is already an NFT animation here, isn't it? I like it. So I'm going to try and utilize my new found techniques of how I can select these pieces without having an ID map. So that's that's another thing I'd like to I'd like to see if I can remember how to do that. That little robot, that spider bot, looked so cool. I haven't even finished the finished the tutorial, so we'll see if um, what I can remember. What, what texture sets do I have? Look, so I've got all the materials here, and that traditionally was a bit of a problem. But now I should just be able to select bits and pieces as I see fit. Is that how we how we do that? I think. So if I go and if I'm thinking. Let's try to put cork on here and a different material on here and not get confused with the layer stack. Let's let's try that. A cork. We don't have cork. Excellent. Um, didn't we have cork? I think I downloaded cork, didn't I? But that was on my old computer, so that's not in these materials. Now that's a shame because we did go to that substance website and get some cork, didn't we? Shame that they don't uh, just automatically update this. Which one was this again? The assets in the marketplace. That's it, I think. 
No, not Creative Cloud. No, no. It's supposed to be a web browser, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, maybe it's it's inside here now. That's that's interesting. Can we make that dark as well? Any any way to make this dark? Maybe not. So if I search for cork here, there should be some that I've already bought. Top results from that's terrible. That's a, that's a terrible experience, Adobe. I'm sorry. That's just that's terrible. So where are materials that I would have potentially already bought? Then is that is that here somewhere? Manage assets. Are those my, my are they my assets? Cork natural. Ha ha. Download. All right. And there's other things. There's this this cork as well. Yes, I remember that. And there's other funky things. A jersey striped pin. I might just go and grab all of these because I needed to do that anyway. Did I download this already? Yes. And then there's this one. And there's that one. This is also kind of cool. And this one. And this one. And chiffon. I love it. There we go. I think I may have clicked one pixel to the left of where I wanted to click. Goody, let's go and import those. I think that's how it works, isn't it? Settings, maybe? That wasn't settings, was it? Where do I put materials into my thing again? Is that the plus here, maybe? Import resources, haha. -ha. Add resources. Download. Polyester chiffon. Cotton, silk, brick, suede, climbing rope, jersey, interlacing, floral, cork, natural, and a more cork, natural. All right, open. Ha ha. <laughs> now, is there a way to to tell? Substance Painter that all of these are base materials. I have to seriously click this button here 10 times. That's convenient, isn't it? Just saying this, this is something that computers would excel at. And I think I'm going to go and import my resources to my your library assets, maybe. So that I have them available like everywhere from now on, I'm thinking. This is correct, right? Do correct me if I'm wrong. These are all base materials, correctly. Is that correct? I don't want to, you know, click a button and then having to find, hey, that's that's made my life miserable. I think I might just try, see what happens. Aha. So now, well, I can look for imported resources. That's nice. So cork natural hex grid pattern cork natural uh, no pattern let's do that so if i so i i seem to remember i just go and le left click and drag this onto here and that goes and applies it already does it i think hours later <laughs> base materials thank you thanks <laughs> base yeah exactly Is it still working on it? I think it is. It's difficult to make cork, you know? Cork! All right! Cork. Hey, this is nice. This is already corky. I like it. It even has, it even has ridges and stuff. That's interesting. I, I wish it didn't, but you know, it's fine for a test. I think it's okay. <laughs> I do like it. It's uh, it's nice. Also, because I suppose Chris's shoes share the same UVs, that's very clever. Uh, the cork is, is actually on both shoes without me having to do anything with symmetry right now. That's cool. I think symmetry is going to be interesting when I, when I start doing some painting. So I'm thinking that over here on the straps and going over here, I think I'd like to have some stitches. Uh, so all around the leather on the outside so that it, it looks like it's been, it's been sewn in there. So neat. Um, scale of this, 
And also we don't have to we don't have to worry about any masks right now because I think it just does it by the material zones here. So it's going to be a little tricky to combine them, but we'll, we'll work with that. We'll we'll roll with it. So scale then. Okay, Ridgy, I like it. Let's try two, shall we? And these ridges, I wonder if that's actually the the height. Can I just go and switch that off? Yes, okay, and then we don't have ridges anymore in this material. That's I, I like that. I like that because I can I just I just might put my own uh, stamps on there if I wanted to do that. It's also a certain amount of rotation I could apply. And I'm not sure if I need the UV projection or the triplanar projection for this. I have a feeling triplanar is probably what I'm looking for. Even though with this cork material you can't quite tell, but I think this is, this is more what, I, what I'm looking for. Maybe now the scale is actually would be even groovier if it's if it's a little larger. Maybe one would have been would have been fantastic. Let's say 1.5 perhaps. And nice. This layer, I guess I don't really need. I can just go get rid of that. Hey, this is groovy. Let's see what happens on the on the inner sole and the, at the bottom. Okay, good stuff. I'm thinking we could probably go and put um, rubber on the bottom and then try. I mean, again, I, I only know the concept. I'm thinking we can we can use kind of a strip type. Um, height material to just put ridges on the bottom that would work and let's put leather on here in fact let's save the project first shall we <laughs> probably a good idea to do that substance wet sandals and we'll just whack that into the into the um, main directory here wedge sandals So a leather then, floral lace fabric, that might also work nicely. I don't remember what that's what that looks like. Oh no, that's lace, so we know that's not going to work. <laughs> that might be nice. Silk smooth red, suede bruised downwards. That might work, especially if we change the color. Interlacing embossed velvet, oh, also neat. Cotton technical fabric. Concrete bricks, that might not work so well. Let me see what other materials I have here. I'm sure I have some kind of leather. Brian, tell me. <laughs> I broke it, yes. Brian, tell me, are you off between Christmas and uh, and New Year? Or in fact, leading up to Christmas? Or are you still working? Leather natural colored. Leather medium grain. Leather fine aged. Leather damaged. Leather creased calf grain things i think this here with the slight shine and some bits and pieces leather bag that's also neat i think i'm i'm going with the leather crease let me do that so left click and drag <laughs> concrete sandals it's gonna be great instantly regrets putting that material on there but that's okay Yeah, I'm not sure. How about leather fine aged instead? <laughs> yeah, much better. Fine aged. Fiddle with the scale a little bit. Remove what you put on there before. Oh, and this one here. Oh, that's that's a stack now, isn't it? That's kind of smart materials and it's got all kinds of exciting things here. My goodness. Probably, is it the fill color? The leather color. That's what we want to change. So I'm not entirely sure about the wine red here. Let me go and try and make that into into something else. I'm not sure yet what. Maybe something more like a like a hot pink, like this slightly darker. That might not actually good look all that good. Or like a red red leather strap, something like a hot red, something like that. Looks a little unnatural, I think. 
maybe it should be more like a wine red. Yeah, I don't know. This would be much easier if we had a color swatch, I guess. But let's let's just roll with this and adjust the scale a little bit. And that's probably on the leather pattern now. Uh, scale. There we go. Three. Was that was that good? Uh, that's actually make it a bit smaller. So there's a couple of things going on here. I think that's the the second thing. The edge damagedness, I think that is what I didn't quite like about this. Is it, is it this? No, that's something else here. The dust probably then. Edge damagedness is alright, but I think the dust, was it the dust that I didn't like? Yeah, I think so. It almost looks nice if I make the scale really large. If it's like looks like crocodile leather, then triplanar versus UV projection. I wonder if UV projection actually looks nicer in this case. Oh, it also populates this on the on the top here. Uh, okay. Oops. Oh, come on. Trackball kind of slipped off my leg there. I don't know about the scale. I, I like it a little bit larger than smaller. So maybe I'll just try, yeah, 4.5, maybe 4.4. Four, four. Four, is, four is funky, I'm thinking. Do you know, I think, and less shiny, yes, we'll do that as well. I think less shiny is a good idea. So Pamela, I don't think you do. I think um, the $20 a month package is probably adequate. So the $40 a month package is is something that um, that includes kind of a rendering suite which is not something we use here I mean the the twenty dollar a month subscription already has three programs in it which is this one here substance painter then there's also substance um, something else and something something else and they one is to create materials and the other one is to I forgot really. So uh, if you're only interested in Substance Painter, you could also go down the route of buying the Perpetual version from Steam, which is 200 bucks, I think, right now. But it is uh, only Substance Painter, and that's even cheaper than $20 a month. 20 bucks a month is the package that I have. And maybe we can actually... Can we see here in Adobe apps what, what I get with that? Yes, you get the Designer, that's the one substance designer and i suppose the sampler as well create 3d materials and lights from real life images i think those are included in the 20 dollars a month package and the thing that is in the 40 dollars a month package is this one here the substance stager so i didn't go for that because that is not it's not a product that i understand <laughs> but I think it hints at the fact that Adobe have other plans to expand this into something else for which you then need something like an independent rendering thing. Um, but since we have Das Studio for that and the end product for me is kind of Das Studio or Blender, I don't really need that. But I have a feeling this is probably something similar to what you have in Claw, that you basically have a, a renderer that you can do more advanced things. It's a bit like Keyshot. Keyshot, if you're not familiar with that, Keyshot is a is a rendering application that shows you models usually that you that you make in things like ZBrush with an HDRI and it shows it to you in, in different color variations just so that you have a better preview of what you're building. So if you're doing something in Blender and you're, uh, you don't want to set up lights and all that and you're just into modeling and making refinements, you often want to just see what does this look like rendered. And Keyshot is an application that lets you just go and drag in an OBJ or an FBX and it just with very few clicks make to have a really nice fully rendered preview and you can use it for promo images as well. And I have a feeling Substance Stager is probably 
probably something like that. But I don't think you need it. You can always buy it later. You can try it out and see if it's if it's awesome or something. I've only ever used Substance Painter, which is this one, and I haven't even looked at the sampler or the designer. But these three, they come with the $20 a month package. And then on the perpetual front, let's just have a quick nosy at that. Oh yeah, and more assets credits. So this is another big difference between the perpetual license from Steam and the $20 and the $40 package. So I get, because I'm paying them $20 a month, I get 20 credits a month. And they roll over, so you don't have to spend them, they just roll over. And one credit gets you one material that you can download from their substance site. So if you're looking for something special in the store, then you can basically go and download that with your credits substance painter 2022 okay so it's now 150 again so the, the offer is gone but yes this is the perpetual license and you can only get it via steam 150 bucks and it'll include updates for 2022 so when they release the next version this won't include update updates you will be able to use this forever even if you decide not to do the subscription anymore, like if I stop paying Adobe tomorrow, I won't be able to use Substance anymore. But with this, you can use it even beyond, uh, you know, like in three years time or so. So it's curious. I think when this was on 99 bucks, I think that would have been good. I'm going to go and put it on my wish list in case there is another sale on. I will let you know. So yeah, it's $150. See, one of my friends already owns this software. So clever. Yeah, so the only thing with this is you only get Painter, you don't get the other two things um, that I've mentioned, the, the um, Sampler and Designer, and you don't get the monthly credits. So you get the starter things, the, the starter materials that come with it, but if you need additional ones, like the ones that I've uh, found, uh, I found here, no, not that, it's on the is it stock and marketplace, was it here? Yeah, like these ones here, they all cost one credit to download. And um, yeah, they... There's some fantastic materials. There's, they, also, they have a second site, which is called Substance Share. And that is materials that the community have made and give away for free. And those don't cost you anything. But if I wanted like the surface of the sun or the oyster mushroom material or something like that, it would cost me one credit. Unless it says it's free, then it would go and uh, a guy can just get this for free. And the other things, they then mentioned that I already own them. I think it says license then. Yeah, so with the credits, you can you can just build up your material collection. Don't know legally what the... Look, I've got like 139 assets now, I believe. It's, I don't know what the legality is of redistributing these materials. I'm sure it's not kosher. <laughs> but also, there's, no, there's nothing to prevent you from doing that. So I don't really know how they, um, how they deal with that. Some are procedural, some use textures. So yeah, you don't you don't get access to anything that you that you see here. I don't know if you can buy credits for just for assets. There's all these all these things to consider. Let me go and see if I can make this less uh, a little bit less shiny here. So that's probably on the roughness map. On the probably on here? No, it's probably not on the dust. Dust does that does that do anything? This does something. That's kind of the the filter on the on the corner here. That does a little bit. The edge damage is also neat. I think I'm gonna leave that on there. The leather pattern is this, and then there's the leather color, which it could be either one of them. It's not that. <laughs> it could be then this one here. Uh, it's not that either. It's gotta be that. Uh, maybe it isn't. Oh, there it is. Roughness. Yeah, there we go. That makes it less shiny. I Shouldn't I be able to put like an image into that roughness map somehow? And maybe that's not how it works on, on the smart material. That could be. Also, you can't actually see what I'm doing. It's this roughness slider here that I'm, that I'm twiddling with. I 
I think maybe this is this is nice. This kind of this type of this type of shine. There's a bit of shine, but it's not it's not massive. So this is, let's see if we can get the whole workflow going. So on the inside, I'm thinking we want maybe something like a like a softer type material. What would that be? Like a there could be other leathers. That's that's a possibility. We could make it like a different leather, like a soft sofa grain. That'll that'll work. So I think in in regards to icons, and this is a smart material, and this is a base material, right? So they work. They're basically just one. Uh, they, they, there's one layer, whereas the smart material is made up of different things like generators and stuff. Do you know, it's funny that you should say that, Nate. Yes, um, that's a very valid point. Uh, bad experience with professional software on Steam. I mean, my only experience is from, from users telling me they had bought Marvelous Designer via Steam because it seemed to be a good deal. But the problem is then Marvelous Designer said, okay, we're gonna stop support for this version. And if you wanna upgrade, you have to bring in your Steam license to our account. And it was all, it was very messy. And the Steam client itself isn't everyone's cup of tea. So it, I totally agree with you, Nate. Think twice if professional software um, through Steam is what you wanna do. You know, one of those things. Right, Brian, good point. Um, I think the default was something else. The default was that the layer stack here is just very cluttered. And I thought, yeah, I can, I'm going to split some of these things out. I've tried to put this shelf on the bottom here as well and put this whole layer stack over to the left. And then I went away back to this. And I don't know, I'm still, I'm still debating, playing around what's the best thing. I think people who've been using Substance for a while, they put this thing at the bottom here. And then they have their materials uh, here, and then they—that's um, how they work. But still, this kind of competes with because I find that these options are very important to deal with. But I'm also used to my layer stack from Photoshop being on this side, so I don't mind which goes where. But I'm kind of tempted to put this um, over here. But I think the tutorials that I was following uh, that, that made that all very um, very difficult. So I, I thought maybe I'm going to go and I'm going to go put this here as I'm getting used to it. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, fine. Here then, and then I think this needs to go into. Dude, no! Ah, oh, I've messed it up, <laughs> Brian. What have I done? Oh, there we go. That's that's perfect. And then the properties can go here. That. <laughs> and then this shelf here. Which isn't, I think, isn't called the shelf anymore. Is it still called the shelf? I think so. That. That, <clears throat> as you see, can't actually bring it back. I, can't, I don't want to close it. That's not what I want to do. <laughs> Dang! Thank you for liking my layout before I broke it. <laughs> Tool pop. Where's the shelf? It might not be called shelf anymore. Oh, I broke it! <laughs> <laughs> Dang! <laughs> oh, really? Third-party access? That is not good. Right. Yes, it can get messy with uh, with Steam. I totally agree. Assets. See, this is the one. A left click and drag. Yes, perfect. And put that. Put 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 over here. There. Whew. It doesn't, by the way, Substance Painter doesn't have a concept of multiple workspaces. So there's no way you can save this layout and go back to it or restore. I think you can restore the default somehow in the settings, but there's no way that I know of to um, yeah, reset UI. That's the one. With that, you just reset everything to base as it was before. But there's no way to have other, have different types of um, layouts. Whoops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. I'm just I'm just looking through my materials here. Calf leather medium grain. I'm thinking that might be nice for the inside here. Put that in there. Yes, yeah, see that's that's nice. I like that. That's awesome already. I don't really I don't even want to change it. I'm super happy about this. And then the outside here, I'm thinking perhaps we can make that like a black and red thing. So let's see if we can have a black kind of shiny plastic thing. 
Latex black. Well, latex, that's a smart material. I'm thinking maybe just this here. Plastic, glossy, pure. That's probably enough for this. And then, you know, ignore the blue. <laughs> Let's not make it blue. Let's instead make it also not pitch black, but just a little bit like kind of a darkish type black. Like so. That is a very good point, Nate. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. And this looks super perfect now. So I wonder if we should have a little bit of a variation in the roughness map down here. Let me see if I can remember how to do that. Or what even... Uh, is there something like scratches? There's grunge scratches. Like this might be nice. But you can't actually see it, sorry. <laughs> this might be nice in the in the gloss channel and then just blend that in a little bit just to give that that super perfect stuff a little bit of variation so maybe i'll go take this and it is now bare sleeves visible it's also not quite oh yeah let's, let's see if we can do something about the size then if we scale this the plastic shouldn't matter but we get a few scratches visible here in the in there, so it's just a bit of variation. Maybe it's not the right map. Maybe it's also UV projection should be tri planar projection. Maybe that's better. You can probably see it from this angle a little better. <laughs> it's just not perfect. I like it. I like that. Uh huh. Because you know they've been they've been worn for a while, so I suppose I could go to town more, but I think I'm going to leave it like this for now. I like the idea of putting maybe some metal onto the buckles here. Or oh, actually, let's finish the inside of the shoe first. So this this kind of material here, what what would be good for that? Kind of a similar color to this, but just a softer material something like uh, something like velvet PBR velvet is that is that cool it sounds groovy let's let's use it let's see what happens if we put that on here can't do it excellent why not don't even know what that is it's just that's a velvet that's a mid that's an effect I think hmm uh, what else we could try another leather type material maybe they're very expensive shoes then leather with with no grain i'm thinking like a like literally no grain at all suede brush downwards is that something we should try perhaps perhaps hey max how's it going yes it's a it's a big it's a big thing about um about launching something when you're not uh when you don't have the Steam client. The one thing I really appreciate about GOG, great old games, is that uh, that you don't seem to you don't seem to need the GOG client at all. It doesn't matter if you have it uh, running or not. You could just uh, not have it. And maybe like five or so is is nice. And then maybe this should match um, this color. I'm not actually I'm not actually that sure about the about the grain effect. Kind of hoping we would do something about the could do something about that but it's not it's not actually it's not kind of the material that i'm looking for we need to we need to look further it's not actually leather that i'm looking for i'm looking more something like like a like a fabric type thing fabric baseball hat that might work if it's small enough might even fit in with the color Maybe that's uncomfortable to wear, I can't tell. <laughs> Maybe I'm okay with it though. And instead of the blue, I mean, it, it does go. But I'm thinking maybe... 
instead of blue, I'd, I'd like to match this cream color here. Well, I can just probably go and uh, do left click and pick something like this up here and then just go on desaturate a bit. Yeah, because it's a bit orange, that's not really the look I was going for. Yeah, something like that. That's that's neat. I'm also thinking now that this material here, which can I select it? No, can't do that. Dang. How do I select things? Select a material. That's gotta be that's gotta be possible. Also, why why can't I select why don't I have my tools selectable anymore? Yeah, I, I'd like to try and just select this material here and then go and and um, and just change the scale of the inner sole bit a little bit. But I can't remember how to do it. <laughs> you know, Pamela, actually, that's the, on second thought, that's actually a really good idea. That's what I do and that's what Brian does. And we're kind of happy with getting the credits because I'm bad at finding materials and just knowing that I could download whatever I like from the Adobe store is actually quite cool. Plus it integrates well with the Creative Cloud uh, ecosystem. So it, it, there's, probably, um, there's probably reason to, um, to do that. I think it's just a nice option that those of us who are not into subscription software, they do have another option. So it's good to, you know, just good to have options. And I, I would, I would agree with you. Get the twenty dollar a month package from uh, from Adobe, and you know, see what you think. Try it out. Also, make you make sure you have you use the, the thirty day trial before you give them any cash. It just gives you an extra month, you know, <laughs> and that gets you also kind of familiar with uh, with Substance Painter. Yeah, me too. It would be nice because they keep selling more and more professional software that costs you, you know, quite a pretty penny that isn't a game. I forgot, I don't remember how to how to do this now. I don't know why I can't why I can't select just the material. I'm sure there's a there's a way to do this, but I can't seem to select tools probably because I'm on the wrong texture set here. See if I can find it here in Soul. I'll just go and pick that and then this doesn't need to be here and that's that's the insole I guess I'm, I'm just sure there's a, there's supposed to be a way to for me to do this I think if I were to make a layer like a paint layer I think then I have tools but just the selection uh, that'd be kind of nice to have that um size scale there we go scale maybe make that uh And maybe one was okay actually. Maybe I will I will leave it there. 1.5. Because two is is too small, isn't it? That's too detailed. One is a bit large, so maybe we'll go make it 1.5. Yeah, like that. And I'm still not entirely happy about the material on the on the outside here. I think I'm I want to keep looking for that. I have a feeling that's probably called straps. Straps inner, I think I'm I'm good with. I like the fact that there's a bit of a pattern going on there. I even like the way it's it's falling, even though we could try the triplanar projection versus versus that. See if that does a does a better job at it. It doesn't really. It's it's just a different job. I think I'm gonna stick with UV projection. And let's see if we can find a different leather type material for the uh, for the straps here. fine eight so i'm gonna go get rid of that i might go or just um make it invisible until we find you know something better i suppose them being straps i think leather is probably still something we want to consider but i might just use a, a plain leather rather than a smart material leather rough dark rough dark maybe that's good Forget I said anything about the smart materials. Let's go and make it, you know, rough. Oh, yes. You know, much, much cooler. Totally more what I'm looking for. Yeah, kind of exactly what I'm looking for. I'm glad we did this. Is this the base color? Yes, let's go and do, do a bit of base color thing. 
and pick our own kind of hot pink. Not not that pink. That's 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 not a good pink. It's, it's kind of something like this. You make it too dark and it doesn't look doesn't look great. So you make it too bright it also doesn't look good. So it has to be has to be just so you know. I think the color that I'm looking for can't be displayed by my monitor. <laughs> so I might just go leave it like this. And I'll see if I can emphasize the grain a little more, like the leather texture. If I could just make that a bit a bit more. Oh, look the other way. Look at that. Very good. Very good. Yeah, maybe a little, a little more. Was oh, that too much now? I've got, maybe that's too much now. Or maybe it isn't. Also, maybe I'm not entirely sure about the... Yeah, I'm not sure about the height. I think the height was actually good the way, the way we had it. <laughs> and the color, I'm just not entirely sure about the color. What, what other colors would work? I think it's just too saturated to be to be super honest. If we take saturation down, you have to also make it darker, otherwise it looks pants, but then it starts looking pants, so I don't know what to do. Maybe we'll leave it like this. Maybe we're happy like this. Maybe the scale is a bit too big, so let's see if we can if we can just dim that down just a, just a tiny amount. Maybe with two? Oh, that's not the scale. Gotcha. Gotcha. Leather fine. Oh, that's a different thing. That's base. If this is the leather texture, yeah, it's got to be the, the scale of that. But that doesn't do anything. Pink is funky, right? Yes, I'm thinking that as well. Cork and pink that goes together with an offset of black. I think that's where we're, we're okay with that. Yes, the scale of this material. How do I change that? If it's not the leather, that's not this. That's the that's that is. Is that the, the roughness? Maybe? Did they do that? No, that's that's the roughness, isn't it? Could it be this? No, that's just the the name of that. Well, I expect this to be on here. Could it be? Oh, it's on the mask, maybe. No, that's it. It isn't that either. Is it the cells? This one here. It's the generator. Oops. What did I do? <laughs> bring it. Bring it back. There we go. <laughs> Was it? Is it the cells? Yes, it's the cells, isn't it? So if we make that two, then it changes. Perfect. So it's like maybe 1.5, 1 1.2. Zero point five. Ay, caramba! See. Is it not so bad? 0.7 perhaps? Because I'd like for this to be a feature. I don't want this to... I, I don't want this to compete with that. So, although I'd like it to be on there, these two things are a little too busy, I'm thinking. I don't know, what, what do you think? I think one, there's something not quite right about it. If I make it larger, it starts to get more interesting. Let's see if we make it like much larger. Maybe that's the that's the solution. But I have a feeling the the texture is then not. It's probably so low res that it doesn't look doesn't look great if I emphasize it quite that much. What do you think? I need opinions. <laughs> I think this might be a little bit too large. So 0.3 might be too large. Like 0.5, I think I can kind of live with. I'd like to see if I can emboss Chris's logo here on the outside. That'd be kind of good. <laughs> I know, Pamela, it's a really... Those are difficult creative decisions. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm going to move on to the metal here on the outside. So I'm going to have a brushed... 
brushed something material. Iron brushed. That's, that's probably also something like gold that would that would go well with this. Gold, oh, pure. Let's put that on here. Oh, pure gold, and then probably also on here, I suppose. No, actually, that would be that's a no. That's also that's also gold. That's it's good. It's one hundred percent pure metal. This, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So my other idea was um, with this um, with this material here that we don't make it that we make this scale much smaller and then instead not actually see a grain like that and then instead just have stitches on the outside of this. That might actually be a really nice um, detail. So maybe we'll try that out. Let's try that out. I'm thinking, so straps. <laughs> Pure gold with the 10.2 scale. Let's try this out. Let's try that. I'm going to go with Nate's scale here. That's in the cells. 10.2. We don't really see anything at with 10.2 anymore. Or did you mean 10.2 on the gold? Yeah, I think for this, we'd, if, if I wanted to go with that idea, I think I'd have to go with with something that isn't even a isn't even a cell. Can we do that? Yeah, I'd probably try to go with something like a suede in that case. Let's leave it on 0.5 as one of the variations we were thinking about, but let's go with with suede. Suede brushed downwards. That might that might work. Oh! We're back at that. Damn you. Try planar projection and let's make that larger. You see that that's okay, but it's I think it's just too too much. What what happened to no that's not what I want. That's totally not what I want. I was more thinking of something like a it's it's gotta be leather, but it's gotta be like super soft and maybe leather back maybe that's what I'm looking for yes yeah, it's, it's just not I'm not feeling it you know I think I'm starting to feel it this this could I think I'm starting to feel it I think I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> that with stitches. I think I think that is a much much nicer look. <laughs> Damn you, oh, pure gold. <laughs> that in various colors and then with stitches on the outside. I think that is that's where we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Only took us an hour. Not bad. All these creative decisions. This is neat. So maybe if I go and duplicate this somehow, duplicate layers, perfect. And I'll call it leather gray. This one and then this one here, I'm gonna call it leather pink. Because I still like the idea of, of it being kind of a funky pink here. Uh, ew. Ew. There's me. This, this is the color, the main, our main color, perfect. So if we turn that into something like a like a good pink, like we had before, right? I don't know why I'm so attached to pink. What is it with me and pink? Damn. <laughs> and the too saturated might not might not work. Too bright might not work. Too dark might not work. But something in the middle that's just you know kind of here. I'm thinking. Then we we finish it off with a few stitches. I think that is that is neat. And then as a variation on the theme, we can then have one with grey and stitches here. I think I might even make that a little bit a little bit darker. Dark brownish type thing. 
Yeah, something like that. So we then have... It's also leather gay. It's actually leather grey, isn't it? There. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Yeah, I think that's nice. And then th that's a nice colour variation. And then we can have a variation for the side and colour variation for the sole. So I like that. I like that. I think here... Let's try something like a rubber sole then. I don't have rubber? Oh, come on! Are you sure there's no rubber in my library at all? I don't I don't have any rubber. Damn. It's a plastic, I think. The plastic. I'm sure there's other other things that say plastic. There we go. Plastic mat, pure PVC, plastic stripes. Oh nice. Plastic mat. Well, that could be good. There's a bit of a profile in there already. Plastic grainy. Plastic diamond. Cables. Those are good shoes. Aluminium insulator shoes. Maybe plastic... What was it again here? Was it grainy? Was it that? That I could try that. That's cool. <laughs> There's a plastic rubber, is there? Plastic rubber. Not not on my installation, Brian. <laughs> There's anything that says that I look for rubber. I don't I'm not sure if we have that. I don't have rubber. Well maybe the the store has it. I'm usually looking at this on the uh, on the website here. I don't know why it now opens in the in the Creative Cloud. I think let's let's just try it on the website. See if that if that works. Is it substance3d.adobe.com? Uh, 3D assets. And I'm sure we can find rubber here. See, much nicer website experience already. Rubber rich, vulcanized. Rubber with tar and stuff, my goodness. Rubber with my own text on it. <laughs> oh, really? You saw it in my smart materials. This, this, this is them, right? Smart materials. Maybe I'll look for plastic. Rubber. It's just nothing comes up. Have I spelled rubber correctly? R U B B E R. Plastic rubber, there it is. Yes, Brian, you totally saw it. <laughs> now I can finally see it. <laughs> Thank you for showing me things on my computer that I didn't see before. <laughs> I get him, uh. I mean, why not? It's, you know, it's a rubber saw. It's a, it's a saw. We're not, we're not going to look too closely at it. I would like to, I think, copy this material, this shiny black, onto this part here. Let's see if I can manage to do that somehow. <laughs> it's the trader! How you doing? Rubber, that's right. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? But then all of these, maybe what they're saying is all of these could stand in for rubber. Maybe they're tagged with rubber, which is why they're all coming up. It's it's crazy. Um, so what did we call this? This is the sole... Insole, is that it? Uh, that's the insole. So the... So bottom, so foundation. Now that's that's that. So those are the buckles. So bottom. That's that's probably the bottom thing. So foundation was that. So upper maybe was that? Yes, so upper. That was it. So if I go to so upper, and then go that can be removed, and then I can just go and copy this material. I could maybe even just go and 
left click and drag it onto here. Is that possible? No, of course not. No, 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 no. That would be intuitive. We can't have that. So if I go and copy that layer and then maybe copy the soul, paste that into the soul foundation thing. Yes, that works. That works. It's almost like I'm, I'm feeling I want to make it pink here too, but maybe maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should stay away from the pink. <laughs> Don't do that there. Let's just leave it like this for now and see if it actually comes into Das Studio correctly. And you know, before we invest a ton of work. Also, what happened to my what happened to my straps? They were pink a minute ago, weren't they? Leather pink. There we go. Perfectly back. This needs to be switched off then. There, perfect. So that's what we have for now. And I think, let me go and try my hand at the, at the stitches. So that would be in this, in this stack. And I'll go maybe make a new paint layer. Let's see if that works. So stitch this. Paint roller stitches one, two, and three. Hello, stitches three doesn't have a preview because we can't afford previews on some of the materials. It's kind of something like stitches number one is already pretty awesome. Stitches complex. Hello, preview. Come on, there we go. Stitches complex. That's very complex. <laughs> Obsession for pink. I don't know why. <laughs> Come on, cross him. Fast, come on, we need to, we, we're on a schedule here. Stitches straight, now that looks, that looks professional. Let's try that out. So I'll do this with my painting tablet in a moment. Just trying to get a feel for these brushes. What stitches small? Yeah, barely. I think straight might be cool. And then kind of on the outsides here, something like that, a little bit smaller. There's just one thing I haven't quite worked out in in substance or in how I would do this in Photoshop is I would not actually draw like this at all. I wouldn't do this freehand. Um, I would do it as a path. So I would go and create a path along the edges of where I want that with ver with um, with um, vector points and then I would tell Photoshop to stroke it when I'm ready and then I would judge is the brush I'm stroking it with good or not I'd undo it adjust the brush size and just fiddle with that so it's it seems weird that I haven't found a way to do this in, uh, in substance painter this way uh, if there is a way please do let me know because that's something that I really need to find out about so while I can do this freehand it's going to be a little crooked but I will try my best so it's one of those things <laughs> for delivery in 25 minutes that's exactly right <laughs> we have customers waiting and stuff I will call my layer stitches here or I, I spell it correctly as well stitches and are we happy with the way this the stitches look I suppose we can do that we can do that kind of later once we've painted something, it's too late to change stuff here though, right? Yeah, there we go. So two might be too much. So I'll try 1.5. 1.5 might even be too much still. Let's, let's try it with one. Yeah, maybe 1.5 was, was the golden medium there. But what about what the stitches actually look like? So if I, if I want that to be a different material, also if, if there's something I want to paint this in with, with height. Yeah, there we go. Height, I think that's what I want to do. Paint with height. Perhaps not with all that much height. God damn it. <laughs> okay, no height then. Fine. Forget, forget I said height. That would just be nice to, to have something... A, a little bit of heightness there. But also I can't seem to find where I would where I would adjust the height as such. Is that an attribute? If I were to paint with height, is there anything else? 
like the heightness of it. It's gonna be like a height slider as I as I do this. It's size, there's all kinds of other things. There's no height. You paint like this and that's it. You paint with height. End of story. It's gotta be where I do this. Stri slice contrast. Is, is that it? Yeah, that is not it. Gotcha. Advanced blending. Tiling, no tiling. Material mode. Stitches straight. Oh, that's openable. I can remember. There's a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> Just slap stitches on everything. <laughs> that I could do. Yes, I could do that in post-production. There's actually, do you know, that's another um, way to, that's actually a really good way to do it. There's something even cooler than in, than in the path in Photoshop. There's something that's super amazing about uh, Clip Studio Paint. That lets you draw a path, uh, but actually that lets you paint a brush stroke that is not a rasterized brush stroke so it's a vertex it's a vertex a, a path that you stroke it's a particular path layer and when you do that with stitches i might actually do this on this occasion I'll, i might do both versions say so this here and then i'll try this in clip studio paint because it's so cool you stroke something and then you go ahead and adjust it but it adjusts with it the actual um, texture that's on there and that's that's super awesome that's actually a really good idea to to do that let me go and try it just without the height then because height height no looks no good and i'll go grab my, my tablet i'll see if i see what i can do freelance here freelance freehand this could get extremely messy <laughs> but hey you just gotta he's gotta try it out You just gotta try. Yeah, see, one one issue I'm thinking is, how do I make it one stroke from here to there? Because I can't see the whole thing <laughs> while I do that. You know, like it's it's easy to make a stroke here, like that'll work. But then, how do I? What happens if I go if I go up and then go over that? That's just that's just. There's got to be a better way to do this and. Uh, I think Clip Studio Paint is probably the way to go then. Because, you know, even if I were to be super skilled and do this freehand, how am I now going to go and, and get around it? Because, you know, the thing is you can't just... You can't just, just then start painting here because... Oh, you can. A skilled operator can. Okay, maybe that is it is possible then. So maybe let's go and oh, there's also there's something else I think here that's called the kind of steady stroke or whatnot. Is that is that in here somewhere? No, that was mirroring. There's a way to lazy. What's it called? <laughs> what's it called again? Was it here? Lazy something. Stroke opacity spacing. It's called lazy something. That that means you can your your stroke isn't drawn immediately. It's drawn like slightly after. Yeah, this is this. I don't think this this is never working. If you try this in Photoshop freehand, it's also always an issue. Because I bet if I look at the UVs, they're probably really straight and nice. Like you know, Chris would do them. Yeah, it'll be much easier to work on stitches in the in the 2D map. I will try it one just for one just for a laugh, but basically. <laughs> so no matter how you how hard you try, it's always gonna look messy. And it could just be that it's not a feature actually in in Substance Painter at this point. Even though I'm pretty sure millions of people are going to cry out for that and say, hey. Oh, 
I mean, it's usable. <laughs> Ish. But it's it could just be so much better, you know what I mean? I might hide this buckle here just to try it out. Buckle. Buckle loop. Oh, look at the shadow here. Ooh, it's worn out already. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it. Oh, I should have... What I should have done is put symmetry on. I didn't do that, so it hasn't painted these things, so... Mm. Straps, there we go. Let's try that. If I put symmetry on, does it... Does it do this? On both sides? Yes, look at that. It does... I can just about see my cursor doing it in both sides. <laughs> Made in China, I like that. Oh yes, that is a possibility. I could try that 3D, 2D and see if that makes it easier for me to... Whoops. Man, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> like you, Brian, I do get frequently confused about which modifier key is being used by what application at any given time. Can I do that here? Yes, that works. So I can, I can maybe work. Yeah, J Brian, my goodness. That is just, that is just super cool. Good point. We do have that 2D view here as well. I totally forgot about this. Be nice if they had path tools in here. <laughs> yes, that's that might actually be easier to, to deal with that. If only I knew If this is in fact the the path I'm I'm looking for, it's crooked. Dang. <laughs> yeah, without paths, strokeable paths. I'm also not entirely sure about the stitch color. I didn't mean to paint with default gray. It should have been something much more shiny and exciting. Oh, come on. It'd be nice if we could just press the spacebar and use it like like every other 2D application works, just spacebar as the hand icon. But no, no, no. Let's not, let's not do that. Let's, let's make the user click other things. To confuse them. I would then also actually love it to... Oops. What happened here? There. <laughs> it's completely made in China. <laughs> totally made in China. Concrete grey stitches. I like it. <laughs> can't can I can't I change this later? I mean, can't I now do some some magic like overlay whatnot? I'm sure there's got to be a way. If this is also that is that's gonna be. Didn't I just rotate this somehow? the way I didn't want it. Oh yeah, there we go. Because that makes my life easier as well. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to do stitches in a separate path. Oops. I can also just go and put 2D only on, then I have a larger uh, viewport here, that's possible. But it's good that it exists, so thank you for the tip. I had completely forgotten about the about the 2D view here. <laughs> Chinese stitches.
the professionals would never work this way. Because also what happens if you want to make a change to the stitch now? It's like screwed up. You have to draw everything. You have to redraw everything. That's just... How can you work like that? So no. No. So I'm going to be... I'm going to do just a really rough job just so that we have something. What is the best software to make clothes? Marvelous Designer, ZBrush or Blender? Do you know what? All three of them. And you use, you basically use all three of them side by side. Like Chris, for example, uses Marvelous Designer and Blender together. And some things are just better done in Marvelous Designer, other things in Blender. So these straps here, for example, they look like they've been made in Marvelous Designer. Whereas the bottom part of the wedge sandals, they're made in Blender because that's easier for hard modeling. Uh, likewise, sculpting tools are also good for certain things, but not for everything. So I think what's important to remember is that, um, that the that you don't use one tool for every part of your workflow. So I think uh, Marvelous Designer is good at draping cloth and cloth-like things, including curtains, pillows, stuff like that. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, curtains, pillows, anything that drapes, including straps like this. But it's not good with things like box modeling. Likewise, ZBrush is really good at... No! Don't do that! Ugh. Redo. ZBrush is, is good at sculpting. It has box modeling tools in there. But learning those is literally going to fry your brain. It can do certain type of box modeling jobs really good, really well, but others it cannot. Um, ZBrush also has cloth dynamics, but they're very different than the ones you find in Marvelous Designer. Some people used to sculpt clothing or box model clothing because they only had one tool. So I think really the the thing is, uh, if you use all of them together, I think you have a you have a good tool set. But it does take forever to learn these things, so learning curve ever so slightly high. Oh come on, navigate already! Oh, do we have stitches everywhere? That's that's neat. That's not bad for a rush job. <laughs> Conclu oh no, hang on, what happened here? We have double stitches everywhere. Oh, it's because I had one path with uh, symmetry and the other one without. Oh, and then the, the thing that I did on the other one just overrode that. Oh. <laughs> That's not so good. Okay, fine. I'll just erase this and, and do it again. Dang. Yes, dang, brother. Eraser. How's that? Is that the other part of my pen? Does that work as an eraser? Yes, it does. Oh, nice. Goody. Erased stuff. Now the, the real part of my pen comes back. <laughs> I'm so used to pressing the space bar here crazy concrete stitches all the way whoops <laughs> do you know i'm actually i don't really have many plans for today i'm happy to hang out so I'll, i'm happy to go and do these redo these stitches in clip studio paint and show you how that works i haven't done it in a while but it's a wonderful process it's just such a cool concept i might do that afterwards
So I'm thinking, let's go put the put these stitches together, try to export these maps and try to import them into Das Studio. I think the other thing that we're going to have fun with is to combine the maps. Because so far, Substance is going to make my make me like 50 maps. And that is, of course, not something we want. So let's see if we can combine the maps. There, okay, we have stitches. It's fine. <laughs> oh, one other thing I was going to do is to bring... Stitches are missing here. What's happening? Marvelous Susanna does, does have a trial, that is correct. Yes, we need to look into that, um, Brian. That would be good, remapping the keys. There's also, I mean, there is a point of, of using the defaults for a program that is actually, that's also nice because then if, if ever you do work in on a different computer, you don't have to remap things, you can just go and apply the basics concrete stitches bitches I like it yeah I thought that's that path little bit was missing here as well Ideally, isn't that a razor tool? Oh, how else? I mean, if I, if I turn my Wacom pen around, it does do me this eraser here, but maybe I can... Oh, I can just do this. That's cool. That's cool. I just wanted to avoid having this and that kind of a cross stitch here. There. That is quite nice, isn't it? How that works. Concrete stitches. We're okay with that. We're okay with that. So the other one last thing I'd like to try out, and I don't really know if I'm capable enough to do this, is to have so that's stitches. And the good thing is we can enable and disable them. So for the for the path I want to want to do in Paint Shop and Clip Studio Paint, I'm going to go and, and export that without these guys. Um, on this here, on the wedge, I'd like to emboss Chris's logo here. Let's see if we can make that happen. So that's gonna be the, is this the sole? Yes, that's the sole. Cork is good, I think. Do I need a paint layer for this? A mask, an effect, a fill layer, a preset layer, a group. I think it's... Um, so I'm painting, what I want to do is I want to paint with an alpha, essentially, and use the alpha as a height map, and then just go... Whoosh. That That's my plan. I think it's just a regular uh, paint layer. And, oops, that's two paint layers, sorry. <laughs> Regular paint layer, and then... Let's see, if I just use this and drag that out... No, that's still my stitches there, so that's not how that works. And maybe then... <laughs> How do I do that again? Is that something like an alpha brush, like a stencil? Is that, is that how this works? No, no stencil. Fabric soft denim, uh, color clamp invert. My God, invert, that's something that I'd like to do, isn't it? Adjust height, that is kind of what I want to do. How do I do that? Adjust height. Is that what, what, what is that even? I can't tell. This is a filter. 
Oh, maybe it is a filter then. Oh. The eraser tool is the second one from the top on the left hand tool. Oh, yes, there. Perfect. Got you, Brian. Thank you. Goody, what else does it have? Eraser and physical eraser. We have two erasers. Oh, dang. So yes, the guy in the tutorial was just explaining that, but sadly I can't remember how to do it. Paint layer, then drag the alpha over to your brush. Okay, so like now I have... This is it, isn't it? That is the, the alpha really that I, that I want to use. So let's go and try it with... With just this arrow here. Left click and drag it over here. No. Dynamic stroke parameters, is, is it in here somewhere? Yes, so in height, I'll go and put, um, either put it over and put arrow in height. There we go, I think that's it. And then we go, uh, then we drag this out. So that's not the, the kind of paint mode that I like. Hollow path, is that off then? Is that how that works? Nope, that's also, that's not it. Stroke, opacity, size, flow, oh, not in the height. Oh, okay, <laughs> dang, okay. Oh, it had actually applied it as an alpha or oh, and as height. But currently I don't know how to, how to do it as a, how to stencil it in. Do I just go and left click and drag the arrow on here? I think that's how I do it. And then I do mask base emissive height. So I want to do this as a height thing and that kind of works. So you just drag it directly on the layer and then it kind of does its thing somehow. And then you can move it and I suppose you can scale it. And then also, I suppose, adjust the height as such somewhere? Of course not! That's not how it works! What are you thinking? You're thinking of a slider that you go left, right, and it goes higher or less high? No, that's not how it works. Even though it should. Deselect all the channels and then select it. Yeah, this this it's not the projection. So I think you were you were on the right track with the uh, with it on a paint layer. I think deselect everything. How do I? S it's maybe too difficult. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. I'm not even sure what brush I should select to begin with. All my, where my channels are. Okay, so all, all of these, I'm gonna go deselect everything. And then just in the height, I'll go just select the height. And in here, I'll go and put something like, like, you know, like this, this, like this arrow here, Star Wars, Star, Star Trek thing. But then if I paint with it, yes, that is actually how it works. Perfect, Brian, this is nice. This paints in the height variation. But now how do I stencil this in? Like, you know, drag out and go, that's, that's set on the, uh, on the, so is it spacing? Spacing set to zero. Or just go and dab, that could be like just boom. No, that doesn't, that doesn't work either. <laughs> it is so difficult, isn't it? And the guy was explaining it in the tutorial and I thought, oh, this is really nice. And then of course, <laughs> instantly forgotten how that works. But it's only because Substance Paint has like 70 billion options. And it's easy to forget one. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> Maybe we'll live without this for a while <laughs> until we figure it out. I'm gonna go and have a bit of fun exporting this now for to to Dash Studio. See if I can um, see if I can 
make head or tails of the combining the maps. So that's another step that I have great, great difficulty with, especially if we have so many material zones uh, like here at the top. So what Substance Painter is going to tell me now is if I say export textures, it'll uh, give me a list of exports and it'll tell me it'll export 66 texture files, which is of course total insanity. Nobody would ever want this, but they say this is the only way it works. So there is, you have to kind of combine all these maps into one. And sadly, they don't have an option to make that happen. I don't really know why, but there is apparently a little Photoshop plugin that with my computer crash, of course, I've lost. So I'm going to have to reinstall it. Uh, that's one in Photoshop. So I won't export this yet. This I don't really understand. If I select nothing, I think it'll, everything will be fine. <laughs> I think. Emissive, I suppose I don't need emissive. Metallic, I suppose I need. But yeah, the emissive map, I don't think I need. So let me go and see if I can, if I can find that uh, plugin or the, um, the, the, it's a script essentially in Photoshop that apparently does this. So let's, let's see if we can, we can do this. Make it bigger and just click that. We can, we can try that. So, um, oh, we're not on the right thing here. So, so, like so, and then just go. Nothing. Nothing. Is it, where do I even say what I'm painting with? Height, yes. If I don't move, I, it doesn't do anything. I have to move it a little bit and then it does something, but then it starts doing, you know, multiples. So <laughs> it's probably a brush setting that I don't really understand. Yeah, so just clicking doesn't do anything. I have to move it at least at least a little bit for, for this to happen. It's also not quite the right way around, but it's also not the right alpha I wanted to use. I'll, I'll read up on it. It's, I'm sure I'll know it by... Uh, this is a good good thing to do in the afternoon to see if we can see if we can work that out. So the guy I was... The thing I'm using is from the GitHub. And I know that I've recently start the guy I've forgotten his name, sadly. <laughs> I should... I'm part of Epic Games, you know, on GitHub, by the way, which is seriously cool. <laughs> Manage organizations. Isn't there, shouldn't there be, isn't that on, on my profile, just like that? <laughs> George, Bill, Manny, one of those stars. There we go, I think it's it's here in stars maze save martin automatic inkle man can we sort this in who did you recently start sort by recently start maze place that's not it. save martin text tools automatic resolve post comphonia substance painter merger that's the one comphonia substance painter merger that's exactly right that's the thing we need and under releases, that is it. A source code? No, we don't want to do that. It's source code we don't want. It's uh, it's it's not this, not this, not this. Submerger, that's the one. It's just download it, man. Download. Look at. Unzip, be happy. Extract all. And then, uh, should it be in here? It's just in here somewhere. Where is it now? Do it seriously. Submerger. That's the one. This, this is all we need. So copy that out. Man, why is this so difficult? <laughs> and then, I think it's a good idea to put it wherever 
all the other Photoshop scripts are. I think he says where that is. Why how testing developers misc... Program files, Adobe, Photoshop version, preset scripts. That's where that is. Ha ha ha. Let's see if we can find it. Program files, Adobe, Photoshop, presets, script. And just whack it all in here. Ding. Yes. Administrator permissions. I am the administrator. And Photoshop isn't open by any chance. I know it isn't. That's good. So I think, I think, and I'm not entirely sure about this, but let's try it out. So I'm not going to export maps from here. I'm going to go and say file, send to export to Photoshop. Please locate Photoshop. Good point. Good point. All you Adobe programs, I cannot expect you guys to speak to one another. That's Photoshop. What channels would you like to export? I want base color, height, opacity. I don't think I need emissive, but roughness, metallic, and normal is all good. Oh good, I have to deselect emissive from every single material zone. That's convenient. No, no, opacity. I don't think we have opacity maps here either, so maybe I can save myself some opacity goodness. I think opacity and emissive. I'm sure it'll have forgotten by the time it comes to exporting the maps again. There has to be a better way to do this. There we go. Got it all. Okay. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Phil was pretty close. Yes, good point. <laughs> <laughs> how to edit maps and textures i don't have a tutorial on that no but if you keep watching i will i will show you how how to do it because i want to redo the stitches in clip studio paint so it's it's going to be let's see if we can export this in principle and get the workflow going into dash studio and if that works we'll go and take, take a look at uh, essentially adding something to these textures in a nutshell, while this is doodling here, in a nutshell, you would go and take the UV template. If you want, do you, are you do you thinking? Are you thinking of doing this in a two D program? So, in a nutshell, you would go and take the UV template out, and then select the parts that need to be a certain color or a certain texture, and you just paint those parts in. The trouble with doing that is that you don't really see the three D object at the same time. So, in order to to do that, you'd have to go and uh, set up your maps, set them up as uh, as the as the correct channels in in your in your rendering program, and then do something, go and refresh those maps, and look at it in your three application. So it's a very cumbersome process to work that way, uh, but technically it can be done if it's just for flood fills or if it's just for small embellishments. It is it is possible to do that. So Photoshop's not going to open around about 50 odd files. Are you sure you want to run this? Yes, absolutely. Totally. This is now a substance script that, that makes this happen. And it will go and give me like five maps per material zone. And I could set this up in Dash Studio, but it would mean that the sandals, when they load in, there's about 60... Um, maps that need to be loaded and that's just just total overkill so since they all share the same uv map what i need to do is combine all those but it needs to happen kind of cleverly so the strap like if we talk about the diffuse map the straps of the on the diffuse map and the buckle on the diffuse map and the sole on the diffuse map they're all on the same uv map but substance painter in its in its wisdom its unchangeable wisdom does it so that um it basically goes and gives me one set of maps for the buckle, one set of maps for the sole, one set of maps for something else, and so forth. And it's it's really 
I don't think anybody wants this feature. And I think Adobe or slash the Substance Crew, they, they don't really want to change it because I know they're all hip and trendy and stuff. And nobody would want this feature. If you have something that shares a UV map, you want all the maps combined. Everyone wants this feature, except for Adobe, of course. So, which is a, it's a small problem, but this is why where this Comphonia guy said, hey, um, I can't change what they're doing in Substance Painter, but what I can do is how we deal with this in Photoshop. So he's a coder, I think, by trade. And if you have Photoshop, you can just export all the maps like this. So Photoshop now loads them all up and his script apparently combines them all together. Let's see. It's kind of fascinating what it does there. So it does what, what I like is that it's, it does go and create these, um, these transparency uh, portions here. That's, that's quite nice. So his, thing now goes and says should be in scripts and it's called submerger there it is so that's neat let's see and click it and it goes ahead and does does the combining now <laughs> i hope Should it still be working? Is it done already? Because I can't tell. Are you are you done? Are you still working? <laughs> that can't have been everything. And this isn't the diffuse map either. There's got to be there's got to be other things in here that <laughs> it's not going to work, is it? <laughs> yes, that didn't work. Because is this isn't combined either. This is basically nothing. I don't even know why we have that. This is also completely empty. Why did we export stuff that is empty? So, so none of this makes any sense whatsoever. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go and do this manually. Uh, sadly, there's no script that does this. So this is why it's so unbelievably important to think about this ahead of time. So um, yeah, that's, this is, this is, this is not exactly good. <laughs> Dang. Punch it in the face, yes. <laughs> it's not my PC's fault. It's the people from Substance's fault. That they don't let us merge these things together here. Reassign texture sets. Ooh, what does that do? Before we do anything, let's go and save it. But what what happens if we go? Should we do that? Should we assign everything to something else? Reassign. What does that do? Disable texture sets. Project texture set, mesh materials. Drag and drop texture sets to reassign them to the mesh materials. Is this what we're looking for? <laughs> okay, I mean, I've saved it, so it's it's good. We don't, we're not gonna ruin anything. But if we say, I don't know, we say, say the buckle is now the thing. Do we, can we just put buckle on here? No, do we do this on here? Yeah, buckle's already on there. But how about buckle loop? Can we put that on here? So it doesn't actually work, does it? Does, does that go into here? Yeah, why, why would we do that? We don't want to disable anything. Mesh material. About, drag and drop texture sets to reassign them to the mesh materials. Or oh, is that if I wanted to maybe take the insole out and put the buckle on the insole? Why would I want to do that? I was kind of hoping that we could just go and create a new whatever and then just go and assign all that there and then just export whatever because then everything is on there. But no, this is not how it works. Yes, contact your system administrator, that'll work. Oops, I was on the wrong button here.
Yeah, that is a problem now, isn't it? I don't even know how to solve it. I had kind of hoped the script was going to work, but I, I guess it did not. Am I am I doing something wrong? Have I have I not read it correctly? Let's read his instructions again. Substate is amazing. Check. There is an issue that it has to be addressed, and that is merging texture sets. Submerger helps solve that. Although not a Substance Painter plugin, it is used in conjunction with the Export to Fortra plugin already available in Substance Painter to help automate the process of merging textures. So what, what do we do? Download a copy. Check from blah. Export material sets to Photoshop using Export to Photoshop plugin. Choose materials you need. What does that mean? I suppose in the... Yes, I got you. In Photoshop, navigate to File, Scripts, Browse, Select Merger. That's it. Navigate to your Substance Photoshop Exports folder to find your merged materials. I don't think I have that. Substance Photoshop Exports folder to find your... Ma Maybe it's there. Could that be it? It's ever so slightly vague. Where, 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 might, where might that be now? Substance export Photoshop folder. That's probably a path that's being set in Substance. Is that right? We're going to so totally figure this out. Cache directory is here. Temporary files also go in there. Uh, shortcuts, no. Libraries, uh, 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 no, then. I remember this plugin used to give me an option to save everything. It, it hasn't quite done that, so I wonder... Let's do this. Let's try this again. Send to Photoshop, but basically uh, pick none. And then just use, uh, say, the straps. And the straps, we only want the base color just as a test here, so that we don't sit here for half an hour letting it do its thing. So straps, base color, and then we'll also say maybe the maybe the sole upper base color. Whoops. There, just those. We'll see what happens. Export in progress. And we want to do that. So this is something that's called by Substance Painter to just open these things. Okay, goody. So now we have this and that. So those are just two of the maps. And we want to combine them. So we go under File, Scripts, Submerger. It doesn't... Now it comes up. Do you want to save changes to disk? This is kind of what I was expecting to happen. And we can do this. I don't think we have to do this because it should have merge them somewhere else, but it's cool. I'm going to play along and say yes. And then there it is. It's in Documents, Adobe, Substance, Painter, Export, Wedge. That's a memorable path. I wonder if we can, if there's a way to just, you know, change that. But this is how it's supposed to work. And then we have both these things on one map. But we also have them um, uh, basically here, so I can go and save this wherever I find it necessary to save this. So maybe I'll go and close this and that. And we're going to try this again. We're so totally going to figure this out. Export to Photoshop. Everything is, it has remembered it, so it's totally cool. So now I'm going to say don't remember, and I'll see if the Photoshop files are just there, so then I can save them to where I think they should go. Ay caramba. Goody. The file script submerger. It does that. And I said, don't save. I'm totally cool. It not saving. And there's everything. So that can be closed. And then this is my combined map. <gasps> I think, boys and girls, we're getting somewhere. This is extremely exciting. So perhaps... It was just too many maps that it was trying to export uh, before. So let's try this again. Save, send to Photoshop. And let's say we use just maybe the base color of the things that we need. 
before we tried with multiple maps. So let's go and say, say base on all these things. It's still far from efficient, but I have a feeling maybe it was just... Maybe I've just, I've just sent too many maps. That's possible. Let's do that. So what do we actually need? We need base, metallicity for the buckle, for sure. And we need uh, height and normal, I think. And the roughness. So five maps. Five times 50 members is just a bit too much. But we'll, we'll try that again. We'll try that again. So this is just the base. Bit of buckle magic going on here. Because there is also, there is definitely merit in working with, there's merit in working this way. Let's see, I don't know if I need to be on a particular layer. I think I can just go on, nope, sorry, that's not browse. I meant to say file script submerger. And there's no save dialog now, which is, I don't know, maybe it's still working. I don't know what's going on. And I don't really have all my combined maps, I don't think. I just have a few. Yeah, so it doesn't really work. I don't really know why. I can always try it again. Maybe I need to be on a specific layer, maybe on the first layer, could that be? Ah! I don't want to save, thanks. So that looks pretty much like the combined map now. So it does work, but sometimes the script may just, you know, may not, may just not do it properly. That could be. Hmm. Maybe we'll just keep plugging away. I mean, I like the idea that it just does this on, on one go with all the maps. So, I mean, let's... Shall we keep this? I don't know. I'd, I'd really like to figure out the... I'd really like to figure out the process. So close... Close all. And no. Well, let's try this again with more maps. <laughs> this is mega boring to watch, I know, but what are we going to do? Let's go and use base color. Should we try all of them? Let's try all and just switch off opacity, emissive, and that's it. So base, height, roughness, metallic, normal. Yeah, that's it. So opacitive and basically what we just what we what we tried earlier there, opacity and emissive. I probably there's probably an easier way to just remove these maps from export options maybe. That'd be a way to speed up this so that we don't have to select this. And okay. No worries. Thank you for being here, Chris. I'll let you know how the experiment goes. And I'm going to redo the stitches in Clip Studio Paint for sure. Because I'm not really happy with that. But hey, it's all good practice and all good fun. And ideally they would address this at the substance end, because even though this is a workaround, it's just that's super inefficient. It's just... Yeah, I think there should just be an option. Would you like to combine all maps on output? Yes. And then just go and do it. And if the UVs are not on the same space, then people who need this functionality, then they can still use that. But, you know, it's just... It should just be super easy to just line all up, all maps up and just, you know, it's just, I don't, really don't see a reason why it shouldn't, it shouldn't be possible. But some, some technical reason that I read about that, it was just, yeah, very difficult to make that happen. Apply for an epic grant and higher quarters, that's what I say.
I wonder if we just add up all the hours that we've been sitting in front of computers waiting for some progress bar to do its thing. <laughs> if we add all that up, is it does it add up to years already in our lives? If we just put it all together, I bet it's definitely weeks and months for sure. Also, having to work this way, this isn't really feasible either. If you had to, so imagine you work with 8K maps and you export 100 maps from Substance because it thinks that's that's the best workflow. That's just that's just rubbish for memory for memory management. You know, what do I need? Four terabytes of system RAM to just make that happen? It's crazy. <laughs> but hey, rant over. I just thought I'd mention it. Not to mention the time it takes to export and load all these things. Anyway. <laughs> Don't add it up. No, absolutely. That's probably the best idea. Don't even think about it. I like working with multiple computers. So like I have several that I can just go and, and give tasks to that then take two hours or five hours or overnight eight hours while I work with another computer and do other things. I like working that way because that's very efficient. I do like that. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to see you, by the way. Happy Christmas, in case we don't see each other again before. I'm planning to do more Twitch sessions this week and next week, uh, leading up to Christmas and between Christmas and New Year, uh, playing with all kinds of 3D toys that I bought recently. So it'd be good to good to do this all, um, uh, all live on stream and share it with everyone. Let's see if this works now. And how's your fella doing? Let's say scripts and submerger. See how far it gets. And also if I just need to run it again, I just keep doing that until it's it's kind of happy. I think I had to just select the first map maybe. I see it hasn't quite done it. So I'll just go back to the first map here. I'm just going to do this again. It's literally until it works. <laughs> if, if it ever does that. So it gets to here, but I don't really know what it's done now, what it still needs to do. And of course, you know, I have 60 files open and it's just, it's just not good, is it? There's some detail on here that I just, it is, this is, this is not good. And you just lose, you just lose the will to live doing it this way. But then you also lose the will to live if, you, if it exports like 50 maps for you. This is all just, this is a, such a terrible, terrible mess. It's, that's, that's just a, a big shame. So that's one, one thing I really despise about Substance Painter, that it's essentially useless for the workflow that we need. Materials, awesome, layer stack, very nice. Exporting maps, 100 thumbs down. Because it's unusable. You have to re-prepare your object and get rid of all the materials and turn them into into vertex colors to make proper selections. Um, or you have to destroy the materials and then reset up your layer stack from things you select from the maps. This is why can't you combine both benefits into one? That just makes no sense at all. So I'd have to, it's, it's basically now comes down to is it easier for me to start all over again and destroy all these materials and make my selections uh, based on one um, texture set and then make my selections based on the UV map? That's another possibility. But then the, the other problem that I then have is that I end up with a massive layer stack here for literally every material. And so both these options are really messy. So this is, this is a good way to compartmentalize each material and each layer stack per material zone. Otherwise you have one massive stack that is just, you know, ah, oh, man. You gotta go, no worries. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you for being here. Wonderful to see you. <laughs> nice. B 
Bella, that is really good to know. So, woohoo! Round of applause for your fellow. That's good. That's good. Good to hear. Really good to hear. I'm debating. What what are, what are your thoughts? Shall I go and do this again from scratch, or shall I shall I actually leave this for another day? And we'll do this in the afternoons on Twitch, and we'll have a quick look at painting the the stitches again with Clip Studio Paint, and then we'll just have to redo everything, and I just have to re set this up and basically destroy it all in Blender before I import it into into Substance Painter. Maybe we'll do that. I'll go and and save this here just so that I know what it is. And then I'm going to go over to the... I don't know why this Star Trek symbol doesn't, doesn't disappear now. It's fine. I think it's, it's over here. You can set something like that. Or that. Or you can say full preview. That's, sometimes that's it's useful when you need it. I might just pick a different brush, maybe. There. Or just put it to call like crosshair thing. Let me go and select the the straps here, and just switch off the stitches. And I will go and just export this one base map for the straps. I think I'll do that with the sent to Photoshop thing again. Basically selecting none and then just go to the straps and just export the base color. That's just one single map. That should do the trick. <laughs> Cycle Dim, thank you so much for following me on YouTube. I appreciate that. Enjoy the stream. Or the channel, or both. There we go. That's the things exported, and it's all it's um, transparent, which is neat. So I could now go and do the stitches here. In oh, the maps aren't good though, are they? That looked much better in uh, in substance. Maybe I should use 4K maps instead. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Let's change the document resolution to something better. Which, how do I do that again? Well, I could just go bake the, uh, just go export the maps. I suppose I could do that as well. Export textures. And I suppose at that point, do I not get a say in how big that is? That's the document resolution, isn't it? Is that under settings? It's project configuration. That was it, wasn't it? Project configuration. No. Dang! <laughs> Size. Absolutely, Bella. That is exactly why it didn't work out so well, because Substance doesn't have that. So I had to do this by hand, and that's a nightmare. So in Photoshop, I would draw a path and then stroke the path. And then if there's a problem with the path, I'd, uh, I'd delete that layer and just go redo the path and then restroke it. But I'm going to do something even cooler in uh, Clip Studio Paint. You're going to love it. You're going to totally love it. Let me see if I can export this out. Let's see if I... Where was that? Brian, is it edit size, edit settings, and then size? Is that here somewhere, or was it under export maps? These are our shortcuts, by the way, if we needed to remap something. <laughs> settings shortcuts. While exporting, there's a size option. Okay, export textures is a size option. I don't see it. It's probably staring me in the face. <laughs> I don't see its size. There it is. Based on how I was looking for some kind of a number. But so let's go. Let's go use 4K then. And we don't want basically any. 
except for... Aha, there we go. You can alt-click if you ever needed to do that. And then... Can you maybe also alt-right-click? If you want to isolate just one, you can just alt-click on that. So alt-click on straps and only that will be selected. As an emissive, it ormal, italic, ness and color. I, I like that this is this is abbreviated that way. That makes perfect sense to me. I like it. So I'm gonna switch off the ormal map, the it map, the emissive map, italic map, the ness, and I'm just gonna leave the color, and that's gonna be perfectly fine for me. I think. I think. Do I get to pick a destination, or is that all just you know? secret yeah secret open output directory because it'd be good to specify that rather than oh we're just going to save it somewhere you don't really need to know we're just we've exported your maps now and you're just gonna have to live with it <laughs> thank you substance painter that's just so nice i will go and literally do it from this has got a I don't even know where this is. Substance Painter export. Any clues where this secretive directory might be? Users, Versal, Documents, Adobe, Adobe, Substance, Painter, PNG. This is super awful. Destination was set on the general section. Really? I'm going to try this again because this is... This might be good information to have next time this happens. Output, is it under list of exports, open output directory? No, that just opens it. It's under settings, maybe? Output template file type size padding. <laughs> How to build a super unintuitive export dialog for beginners. I don't even see it. This is, can I set a thing for every map I don't even see it Brian output templates file type size padding I remember under global maybe global all right global thank you Brian thank you for your patience I appreciate that and there's also the size now that's nice reset to default change default how's that is that something we can we can do don't make the default some convoluted, really deep path that isn't applicable to anything. Bad, that is. I'll put it into something called maps in my projects folder. There, maps. Ding! It is, sometimes I feel like this program really wants to trip me up. So export to my directory. Close it down. Bad that. Bad substance. Save everything. And we don't even need Photoshop for this now. I'm going to go and use uh, Clip Studio Paint for this. And then uh, we don't even need Das Studio because we're not going to do the, the round trip to Das Studio today to, to import the maps there, which is a bit of a shame. It's Clip Studio Paint. They've just uh, uh, released an update. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's uh, something that is very similar to Photoshop, but it's more geared towards uh, illustrators and people who draw comics. So it has good uh, good material tools. It's in that respect, it's almost like a cross between Painter, between Corel Painter and between Photoshop in that it has, um, you know, interesting things. I'm going to go and show you this maybe on the, maybe on something that's not quite so, quite so bright. Illustration, see that's that's cool. Paper color will make that something dark, and that's our document. And then uh, in here, I can go and they've just recently released in this update. They added a very cool liquify tool. Maybe I can show you that later. But if I go, let me see if I can remember how to do this. There's a vector layer. I can create so these are there's different types of layers in the stack there's regular layers like raster layers there's also vector layers that you can draw a path on directly and you can basically use your brush like you were using it with the rasterized layer but everything's a vector and that's very cool so if i go and uh, paint something on my raster layer 
uh, and use uh, something like um, I don't know a, a pencil and we use something like white then there we go so that's a regular uh, raster layer and as you zoom in you can see it's getting pixelated and stuff but if I go and do the same thing on a vector layer <clears throat> on a vector layer, man <laughs> There. on a vector layer then this is now actually a vector and i can go and um and move this around so it, it looks like a regular brush stroke dude seriously why are you doing this to me oh come on but this is now a vector path and there's tools that you can use to uh, to display that so the direct selection tool i believe selects that and you can see it's a curve and it's interesting so i can go and move this now but it being a curve it can be uh, infinitely um scaled dude come on already not only that it can also now be changed so after i've put it on the canvas i can go and do something with it if only i remember the tool for this it could be this yeah, that's not it it's cut the frame border no that's not it either this is for speed lines this is for gradients and free from gradients that's also not this that's liquefied blend that's not it either that's erase this is effect this is also not it spray can these are just different ways of painting none of that is it this is the IDOP tool, that is also not it. Refer to editing layer, that's also not it. Where are these super exciting tools now that I can modify the vector path with? So you can, um, you can basically redraw it. I will totally find it. Those are rulers, that's not it. That's not it either, it's fonts that's that and flashy bits and this is that this these are them here so control point means i can go and literally left click and drag a point on this thing i don't know why it does this this is really not what i what i want um but yeah you can take points out you can also modify uh, vector lines and if you notice what happens to my stroke as I do something like that it goes and the stroke actually follows the the thing that I'm that I'm correcting so say this vector path is too dense and it's it describes exactly my my original stroke but I can go and uh, simplify the vector line if I want to do that I can basically just go and redraw this and then it will make less vector points in this it makes the line a little bit less stable but if you wanted to modify it with something like uh, you know uh, put a proper curve in you can totally do that there's also redraw the vector line width adjust the line width connect vector lines and all kinds of cool things so and now my my this vector line has less uh less points and that means if i needed to make adjustments it's easier to do this this thing flashing up all the time, I haven't actually seen that before. This looks like something um, that is new in this version. Maybe it's just something I've enabled here that I should have disabled. But this is how we can essentially draw um, stitches because the brush that you're drawing things with is... Uh, you, you can use any kind of brush so this was just a pencil but i could use my stitch brush you can use something like a uh, like a, what's it called here like a like a particle brush with like you can draw gold chains and stuff like that Let's see if i can find it back hatch for clothing hatching ruled things how about cross hatching is that is that cool no that's that's totally not what i mean it's one of those programs that you can frequently get completely lost in. They have really cool features. This is a really nice program. I'm glad I bought this many years ago. Is this a good example? Yeah, you can draw flowers and they're all basically a vector line now that I can use uh, my, my other funky little tool to, uh, to utilize and move points in. 
and just change whatever my stroke was. So it's not. Uh, so I think this is this is kind of a, a very cool way, better way I think than than Photoshop does it in regards to you draw a path and then you stroke a path. I like the idea that you basically draw the path as if as if it's a as if it's something that you. Uh, that you draw with a brush and then you can change it afterwards. So this for my for my um, stitches, this means if I do have a stitch brush, which I'm not entirely sure if I do here, but for my stitch brush, it means, stitch brush, it means I can go and stroke it and then just correct it and make it follow the path as I'm, as I'm working. So very cool. Cycle, hello, how you doing? It could be, it could be. I'm so sorry you had to wait 10 minutes before you started chatting. It's one of those things, it cuts down on, on bots a lot, so I do apologize for that. It, it keeps a lot of bad guys out and those without patience, so thank you for your patience. Very nice. Yes, I'm not entirely sure what that is about the, um, the, the, uh, the maps. I might just get in touch with the developer of that script and just, just bring that to his attention and say, in this case, what do I need to do in order to combine my maps? Because I've done it before and it works really well with less complex things and uh, probably also with maps that are less empty that could well be so i'll ask him for his uh, for his guidance and maybe we can you know we can work this out that'd be kind of cool let me see if i do have a stitch brush here i don't think i'm i'm not sure if i do i might have to make one and that might be too much for me because <laughs> this it's not a program that i use all that often because i do remember i had one a while ago. It's just fairly simple to make it, but I, I just, this is not something I, I remember from the top of my head. Mill pen, oh, nice. And then also, I want to know why why these things just keep popping up here, even though I haven't... I don't, I don't recall it being quite that, quite that bad. <laughs> just line width? You'd think it makes it wider, but it doesn't! It used to. Connect, that's not. Simplify. Simplify is cool. And then it now only has a couple of control points. Very cool! I love this. I absolutely love this. <laughs> Connect vector. That's also something I can set a point, add a control point if I needed one. In here I can go and do this. Ah! This is just so cool! <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> So, uh, no stitch brush. Dang. Yes, in that case then, I don't know what else to do. If I don't think I've, I don't even know how to make a brush like that anymore. But this is what I like using for, for stitches back before I had my computer crash. I may actually have a look if that brush still exists on my old computer, if I can find it. And if not, I will dig into how to how to make one. So yes, that's on my list of things to do. Make a stitch brush for Clip Studio Paint. In fact, make several. See if we can make that happen together on Twitch. In fact, this uh, this week I'm going to be on Twitch leading up to Christmas and between Christmas and New Year from about 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon. And I'm going to go and see if I can manually combine these maps in Photoshop. That's a bit of a tedious process. Um, or I might go and start this again from scratch and merge these all these texture sets in Blender. I might do that. My friends, I'm going to say goodbye and um, thank you so much for dropping by and joining me here, as well as yesterday on the DAS channel. I'm going to put a link to my Twitch channel in the chat now, and I hope I'll see you there during the week because, you know, it was really nice doing this last year, trying out all kinds of 3D tools and just hanging out over a glass of eggnog or some coffee or some tea. Be good to see you there. My friends, take care. Bye-bye.